is worried about resources we usually get to Russia to keep up industry like petroleum, gas, earth, metal, or this shit hits so many of us. Yeah, I mean, this is... The middle of the fighting. Matthew, tell us what you're witnessing there. Oh my god, not the Toyota Camry. Are you serious? I mean, those things can withstand bullets, though. They're powerful. They're powerful machines. I I'm not worried about the Camry. So we, may, we may get... We Jim, may get we've come out of the center of the uh, Ukrainian capital, Kiev, and we are here at the Antonov Airport, which is about 25 kilometers, 15 miles or so out of the center. These troops you can see over here. Stand up, Lewis. These troops you can see over here, they are Russian airborne forces. They have taken this airport. They've allowed us to come in and be with them as they defend the perimeter of this air base here where uh, helicopter-borne troops, these troops, uh, were landed in the early hours of- So for those of you, let me just point something out here, okay? For those of you who are thinking, what the fuck? Why can't we just like go and help Ukraine? What the fuck? Why can't we just send military to Ukraine right now to defend them, okay? Because I know that a lot of people have that take, right? A lot of people, uh, understandably, reasonably, their first fucking attitude immediately is like, we're the world police, we're America, we have an incredibly big-dicked, uh, long-dicked military, why aren't we fucking sending uh, troops there? Well, the reason is, because Russia has nukes! So if there was a fucking world war between America and Russia, then it's a nuclear war. And that's precisely why, that is precisely why, because of Article 5, uh, the, you could not have fucking NATO uh, uh, accept Ukraine into NATO. That's why Germany would never allow Ukraine to be in NATO. That's why America would never actually allow Ukraine to be in NATO. And that's why they fucking lied and dangled it in front of Ukraine, who was understandably and rightfully concerned by Russians encroaching on their fucking territory. And now all they're going to get is fucking guns, okay? Okay. All they're going to get is guns. That's it. You're going to get some guns and it's GG's, okay, after that. It's like, go ahead, grandma, uh, trained by uh, some fucking CIA-trained Azov battalion guys. Go ahead. Shoot at some fucking Russian paratroopers. Like, it's horrible. This was the worst possible fucking outcome uh, of, of all. And the unfortunate problem here, the, 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 to make matters worse, is that like, there's no, there's no reasonable way to deal with Russia. If Russia wants to fucking, if Russia says, fuck diplomacy, or rather, uh, you're not giving me anything I want. You're not even fucking giving me any concessions. And I'm a world power. I'm not like fucking Afghanistan. Okay. Um, they're going to fucking behave in this erratic way. They're going to behave in this violent way. And they are. And that's something that we as like, uh, I guess we in, in, in America have to understand and expect from our government as well, which is that like we are no longer the, the imperial force that could just like Russia is no longer than the post-Soviet uh, uh, carcass that it once was. OK, that we sacked, that we put some of the worst, disgusting freaks in positions of power as we sacked that entire fucking country. OK in the aftermath of the end of the Cold War when America took the dub and capitalism won, okay? It, it's, it's not. It's not that fucking carcass that it once was. It has a profound amount of economic power from all of the energy considerations it has, okay? So we're playing a, we're, we're, you know, we're playing a different fucking game and we're treating... It feels like we are... Russia isn't USSR either right now? Of course not, but it doesn't matter. We think like every other country that we are involved with, uh, even if they are sovereign regional power, especially if they have fucking nukes, every country that we, involved with, uh, with, that we involve ourselves with is not like Afghanistan. You can't just like fucking roll over. It's not Libya, okay? You can't do that. So we can't actually help? No, but that was the case. That was literally the case. You could not help last week and you could not help a month prior and that's why i was saying this is fucking bullshit that's part of the reason why saudi arabia can do whatever the fuck it wants even though saudi arabia doesn't have the exact level of power that russia has even okay we are energy dependent why because no one wants to pay a hundred dollars for fucking gas Anyway. <sighs> so.
So, that's why it's like frustrating when people are like, appeasement, appeasement, appeasement. Well, what's up? What are we doing now? We're doing appeasement now, aren't we? Sure seems like we're doing appeasement. Appeasement was always the fucking point. There's no, there's no way to fucking deal with Russia. Like, you're not going to fucking go and, and actually engage in, like, active war, okay, with Russia. Because they have nukes. So this was fucked for Ukraine the whole time? Yes! Yes! The only way out of it is to exhaust diplomatic options, at least, before this happens, okay? That's it. Kind of like how when America wants to fucking roll over territory, no one else can do anything about it. You can't do shit. You literally can't do anything. If America wanted to invade Ukraine tomorrow, what the fuck are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? What are you going to do? Are you going to say no? No, you can't. Not saying that they would, obviously, but you can't do anything to a fucking territorial, regional fucking power that has uh, a gigantic nuclear arsenal, okay? That's why you have to treat them as they are individual actors and go to the table and, and make concessions. That's what I've been saying since fucking day one. Okay? It's basically an argument for countries to nuke up. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying that. I got three rules here, okay, at the Hasanabi broadcast. Three rules on nation building. Get nukes immediately, okay? If you don't have nukes, make nukes. If you do have nukes, never give up your nukes. And lastly, if America says you have nukes and you don't actually have nukes, <coughs> Libya, never even... You're fucked. Make nukes immediately. You have to drop everything. Drop the fucking water, uh, you know, facilities that you have. If you're a Gaddafi, fuck the water. Fuck the fucking rebels. Fuck the, you know, Wahhabists that you're dealing with or whatever. Immediately get nukes. Too late. Gaddafi couldn't do that. And then he got, you know, the ass blasted literally by a bayonet on television. But that's the whole point. Like you, when, when a country says you have nukes, when America says you have nukes, you gotta fucking try to find nukes immediately, whatever you do. Like, do some James Bond shit. Okay, can you give some examples of concessions they can make? Yes, Minsk, Minsk 2, okay? Minsk uh, 3. Minsk's so nice, they had to do it twice. That's it. That was what I've been saying from day one. It's a neutralization agreement that would uh, uh, identify DPR and LPR as... Uh, autonomous regions that are still a part of Ukraine, okay, that would allow them to have at least like, uh, you know, to maintain their culture, cultural heritage, like their Russian language and shit like that, while simultaneously, um, you know, I, I would assume they would also make sure that like Crimea's water crisis uh, was, was uh, no longer a crisis because one thing that Ukraine did do was uh, dam up the, uh, the, the river going into Crimea after Crimea uh, was annexed by Russia. And uh, at first, the water reserves were enough for Russia to deal with, but uh, it was becoming a water crisis. I think someone wrote about it like a year ago. So uh, that probably would be another part of that, uh, another part of that neutralization agreement. And ultimately, this idea that, uh, you know, no one would violate a, a deal that would make both sides happy, that no one would fucking violate. But Ukraine didn't like the Minsk agreement and Russia was uh, not really involved in it regardless. So, um, you know, it... it it, it did not happen in the way that it was supposed to. Okay. You don't think that's completely off the table? No shot. Russia will give Donbass territory back even if they retreat from the rest of Ukraine? I mean, um, right now, I don't know what's on the table. I don't think anything is on the table. Right now, I think, like, uh, it's, it's attrition. Uh, you know what I mean? It's about how much the, I think right now, it's about how much the Russian economy can handle and how much Vladimir Putin can handle, potentially. Are there going to be assassination? Um, are there going to be assassination attempts on Putin? You think there aren't assassination attempts on Putin? That motherfucker is a, literally a, a KGB agent, bro. Why do you think, I mean, look, this is too much conspiracy shit and I don't like to engage in it. But Vladimir Putin is a fascinating individual, okay? Like, an actually fascinating individual. I don't mean that in a good way. I mean that in a bad way. And, like, um, he... A lot of people state that his, his circle has gotten smaller and tighter. He's become really paranoid in recent years. I mean, this is, like, palace intrigue that happens with Erdogan all the fucking time, too. I like to watch it, but I'm not, like... I never, you know, base my analysis off of it. 
but people say that he is um his circle has gotten smaller he is very scared he's scared of the fucking vaccines because he's scared that like whoever gives him the vaccine might actually poison him or whatever so the suspicion is that he's actually not like even vaccinated and he's terrified of covid and that's why he does like those insane um you know those insane fucking uh, covid tested uh, conversations with uh, you re- with like leaders like Macron. Remember that big ass table that they were on. Uh, part of that is because the the delegation uh, refuses to get uh, COVID tested. Like whenever he's talking to leaders, foreign leaders and whatnot, and he does not want to be near them because he's worried about fucking COVID. Like he's terrified of COVID. There's a conspiracy that he lives in a vault. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it. Yeah, there's also another conspiracy that he might have cancer. That's another one with Recep Tayyip Erdogan as well. Okay. Um, but. More and more Russian soldiers are surrendering after finding out they're on an offensive against Ukraine. Thoughts on this? A bit ago, a whole Russian tank platoon surrendered. I don't know if that's real or not. I will not look at unconfirmed reports on that stuff. But. Um, but, uh, you know, it was not, this was not even a popular fucking move within the, within, from what I understand, within the, uh, the military either. It's just not popular. It's not a popular idea to just like fucking all out invade Ukraine, bro. You can't do that. It's like if America invaded Canada, you know what I mean? Like. And, and there is no historic, like, uh, ties or associations that you could point to about, like, America or Canada being a state. But, like, it, it is kind of like that, you know? We're very similar. They're just, like, a little bit more European, you know what I mean? And that's not, like, if you were, like, oh, no, we're invading Canada, like, fuck that, okay? They've, uh, they've built a deal with, like, they've done a deal with China, or uh, China wants to build a military base in Canada, a forward operating base in Canada into the, um, into the United States. And we're like, no, fuck that. We're going to invade. Um, in that situation, like a lot of people will be like, well, what the fuck? We don't want to do that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want to fucking fight a war with my Canadian viewers who I love. Anyway. Think you underestimate the power of Russian propaganda here in Russia? No, there's always dumbasses, man. Remember, my friends, you, if you're Russian, you watch me shit on the American Kekonas all day, every day, the American hogs, right? What, do you think Russia doesn't have hogs? Of course they do. They have fucking nationalists. They have hogs. They have fucking conspiracy theorists. Uh, it, just like every other country, it's not a monolith. Of course, there's going to be people that love the idea of invading fucking cry, uh, uh, invading uh, Ukraine and taking it over and like killing everyone or whatever the fuck. There's also Nazis in, uh, on the Russian side too. So like, you know, there there's a there's a whole birth of different ideas and ideologies in in Russia as well. So that's not you know that's not new. We often always, we often always have this tendency, and that's something that I want everyone to fucking uh, get out of. Uh, We have this tendency to think that like foreign nations are monolithic and that they're operating uh, on, on like the basis of good or evil uh, when they're not. They usually in most circumstances uh, are, are behaving in a way that, that benefits their interests. They are also, regardless of how authoritarian they are, they do actually fucking uh, uh, look at what the public's opinion is on the actions that they take. Because you know what happens in an authoritarian country? When, you're, when, you're, when your popularity is waning, do you know what happens? You get killed, okay? You, coup de toss, and you get fucking killed. So... That's the reason why, like, even someone like Vladimir Putin, who's, like, very, uh, very successfully maintained his uh, grip of power, is not going to make insane fucking moves that, that harm uh, his position, that actually uh, hurt. You should add an emo for when you don't want to fight against destructive, repetitive criticism. You end up repeating yourself frequently because people love arguing with you so much over little points. Yeah. yeah I don't know what to... That this morning to take and to form an air bridge to allow for more troops to come and you can see 
These are Russian forces. You can tell they're Russian. I've spoken to them already. You can tell they're Russian. They've got that orange and black band to identify them as Russian forces. I've spoken to the commander on the ground there within the past few minutes, and he said they are now in control of this airport. And within the past few seconds, just before you came to us, they were engaged in a firefight, presumably with the Ukrainian military, which says it is staging a counteroffensive to try and take back this, this, this airport. We can tell you now, I'm standing outside the... Um, massive news rushes across the Dnieper, Dnieper River in the south with tanks under fire from the Ukrainian side. So this is another thing that is like very confusing to me because